because it's never getting paid. And, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm going to go ahead and call to order this Livingston City Commission meeting on September 17th. It is 5.31 p.m. Uh, roll call, please. Chair Kale. Here. Vice Chair Nudes. Here. Commissioner Schwartz. Present. Commissioner Lyons. Here. Commissioner Willich. Here. You have a quorum. Thank you. All right. Well, we'll start out the, the meeting like we do with every meeting with uh, general public comment. This is for comment that is for items not on the agenda this evening or anything within the consent items. Um, I will remind folks uh, that individuals are reminded that public comment should be limited to items over which the city commission has supervision, control, jurisdiction, or advisory power. We do limit comments to four minutes per person. Um, and when you come up, we'll ask you to sign in at the podium and then give us your name and address. Um, so is there any public comment for items not on the agenda or in the consent um, items list? <laughs> Welcome, Lindy. Hi. Oh, there's no pen. Oh, we'll get you one. Thank you for giving me time um, two weeks ago, and tonight I'll be very, very brief. Um, the reason I um, spoke last week, I wanted to lay the foundation of my um, study of our local history and the islands we have and everything. My concern tonight, and it has been for three years, is the signage down at the swimming pool. There's still two signs that say Sacagawea Lagoon, and it, it just isn't. Sacagawea Park is on Smithhurst <clears throat> Island, and the Sacagawea Lagoon starts at the head gate at 8th Street, comes and goes around and stops at the Stone Bridge at Yellowstone Street. And then from Yellowstone Street on over to the swimming pool is Miles Park and on McLeod Island. And those signs remain, and I just it just breaks my heart and just is discouraging to approach everybody at every level. Park and Rec, um, Grant, when he was here a week, um, Shannon and everybody all the way up and even go upstairs, get the documentation to prove the map and prove the, the legal written description that our lagoon is indeed Miles Park Lagoon. And if you guys would just do that, please, as one favor. Um, I, I've been addressing it for three years. I love everybody. I love what's going on in Livingston with the new parks and recs department, but it gets really discouraging when you keep going to everybody knocking on doors and presenting the truth that the sign, not that the sign is wrong. I don't want me to put it in a negative light, but the sign should read Miles Park Lagoon. If you guys can just please get that corrected. I, it sounds minuscule, but you know, it's like we're not living stone or loving stun, like people say, it, it's the Miles Park Lagoon, and please, if you guys do that before I die, he's sending me in. <laughs> anyway, the clock's ticking. But I love everything that's going on, but if you just please get that done. Three years of approaching everybody and climbing up the ladder, and you know, one of these days, the ladder's gonna tip over off the house. And I just, I would like to live to see this, I need to correct it. I, I don't, I, my name is Lindy Gibson, not Karen. Okay, that's <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. I love you guys. Um, anyone else for general public comment? Items not on the agenda or the consent item or consent list. I, I don't see anyone in the room. I'll ask anyone online if they have any general public comment tonight. Uh, feel free to come off mute and say your name. Raise your hand. Hmm. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close general public comment. All right, we'll move on to consent items. Commissioners, anything within the consent items that you'd like hold? Not only. I am gonna cons pull consent item A. Um, anyone have a motion for the rest? 
I'll move to approve consent items B and C. Okay. I'll second that. I have a motion <clears throat> by Lyons and a second by Willich. All in favor? All right. All right. Motion carries. <clears throat> um, I pulled consent item A, which is the minute Mr. Gager on page seven. I think there's part of a sentence missing at the very end. <clears throat> Like the city manager offered that. That is correct. The rest of that sentence is uh, the city manager offered that amending the growth policy occurs by a different process. So okay, we'll get that added in. Thank okay. you. All right. Anything else on the notes, folks? All right. I'll make a motion to approve consent item A. Second. second? Second by Schwartz. All in favor? Aye. All right. Aye. Motion carries. All right. We will go ahead and move on to proclamations. Okay. Our first proclamation this evening. Um, is a proclamation of the Livingston City Commission IT Professionals Day in Livingston, Montana, September 17th, 2024. Whereas information technology professionals are essential to the smooth and efficient operations of local government, ensuring that critical systems and services are maintained, secured, and accessible to our employees and residents alike. And whereas the City of Livingston recognizes the invaluable constitution contributions of IT professionals who, whose expertise and dedication help protect sensitive information, enable effective communications, and support our community's daily functions. And whereas IT professionals are on the front lines of innovation, working tirelessly to implement new technologies, ensure that our city's digital, digital infrastructure is reliable and resilient and often operating behind the scenes without recognition. And whereas in an increasingly digital world, the importance of secure and, effect and efficient technology systems cannot be overstated. And the city of Livingston is for fortunate to have skilled IT professionals who keep our systems operational, adaptable, and prepared for the future. And where, whereas IT professionals have played a key role in ensuring the city of Livingston's ability to deliver services remotely, adapt to new challenges, and maintain critical infrastructure and connectivity during emergencies, and now for, therefore, be it resolved, on behalf of the Livingston City Commission, I, Carrie Kale, Chair, do hereby proclaim September 17th, 2024, as IT Professionals Day in Livingston, Montana. And further, I encourage all residents to take this opportunity to honor and celebrate our IT professionals for their individual contributions and to recognize the critical role they play in advancing technology, supporting our community, ensuring the smooth functioning of our city's infrastructure. Mr. Gager. <clears throat> Thank you, Chair Kale. I uh, join you in uh, celebrating our IT professionals, including the three that we have on staff jointly with Park County, led by Erica, our fantastic IT director. Thank you. Commissioners? I'll second that. Definitely. I've worked with them. So they I'd are like good. To, oh, I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I'd like to add also um, that I have. Uh, a couple of friends in the IT world, and one of them wanted me to speak quickly about uh, a, a big problem actually in uh, the cyber, cyber world, which is elder fraud, which is phishing, scams, et cetera, committed against uh, elderly citizens 60 and older, and that they are by and large the largest group that are targeted for scams to the tune of $3.1 billion last year. Uh, the average loss, I think, in the state of Montana for uh, people over the age of 60 is almost $34,000. That's the average loss of, of people that are scammed out of money. So uh, I have, I don't have that. a group with links and some presentations that were given to me to uh, submit that they didn't make it into your email, unfortunately. <laughs> they, got, they got filtered out by our IT people. Uh, <laughs> but the, the, this is the FBI's elder, elder fraud report. Um, it's got some really incredible information about how to uh, 
recognize scams and how to recognize phishing attempts. Um, then there's also the ic3.gov. That's where you would uh, go to, to to report any uh, crimes that have been committed against you. And, uh, and just good helpful hints uh, that the state and the federal government provides for keeping safe on, online, like smart clicks. Thank you, Commissioner Welch. Yeah, you That's bet. Really informative. So yeah, Can we can add that to, I think, mm -hmm. the mix of this stuff as well. We'll add it to the minutes and then that'll be findable for everyone if you're interested in sure. looking at that information. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. We have one more proclamation this evening. Um, and this is the proclamation of the Livingston City Commission Thank a Police Officer Day in Livingston, Montana, September 21st, 2024. Whereas police officers dedicate their lives to protecting and serving our community, often facing dangerous and challenging situations to ensure the safety and security of all residents. And whereas the members of the Livingston Police Department work tirelessly with professionalism and integrity to maintain public order, enforce laws, and provide critical emergency services to the citizens of Livingston. And whereas the efforts of police officers to build positive relationships within the community, enhance public safety, and protect the rights of all individuals are deserving of recognition and gratitude. And whereas police officers exemplify courage, resilience, and a steadfast commitment to serving others, often sacrificing time with their families and loved ones to fulfill their duties, and whereas the, their commitment to justice, bravery in the face of danger, and dedication to make making our neighborhoods safer places to live, work, and visit are invaluable to the well-being of our city. And now, therefore, be it resolved on behalf of the Livingston City Commission, I, Carrie Kale Chair, do hereby proclaim September 21st, 2024, as Thank a Police Officer Day in Livingston, Montana. And further, I encourage all residents to take an opportunity to thank a police officer. And I will look over this way and say, thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Dietrich. I, I always thank a police officer. So. <laughs> Andrew, if I haven't said it yet today, thank you. Thank you for the support, and I'll make sure that we get that out to the guys. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. All right, moving along. So we do have one scheduled public comment tonight which is the Parks Master Plan Team and Process Introduction. Mr. Gager. Thank you, Chair Kale. Uh, mm -hmm. I would invite uh, David Locke from Stockwell Engineers up. And uh, Dave and his team were out all day today uh, mm -hmm. traveling the parks with our park superintendent, uh, getting the lay of the land. And in about 15 minutes, they start the first of, of several focus group meetings um, that they'll have over the next couple of days uh, with some of our, um, you know, more um, intense park users, sports organizations, event organizers, um, and, and that will kind of set the table. So I'll turn it over to, uh, to Dave to talk a little bit about the project and the process that the community can expect over the next 10 yeah. months or so. Yeah, Dave. thanks, Grant. Uh, my name is David Locke, uh, lead landscape architect uh, and partner with Stockwell. Uh, we're helping out Grant and his team and working with the community on uh, updating the park system master plan. Uh, we just started kind of really the kickoff phase of that and uh, the public input process is just getting started and underway. Uh, so our trip today and the next uh, couple of days is to really uh, visit all the parks. We went around with city staff today uh, and visited all the parks. Uh, we're going to continue to do that over the next couple of days. And then, as Grant said, we're going to have uh, a number of focus groups uh, meetings uh, this evening uh, and throughout the day tomorrow uh, to gather feedback, initial feedback of what people think about the park system, what they'd like, what they like what they like to see improved um, and some of their uh, opinions on that. Then we will be at the farmer's market uh, tomorrow night uh, from 4.30 to 7.30 uh, at the city booth there uh, to have, uh, we'll have boards and sticky notes and pens for people to leave comments. We'll have a map of the city uh, and the park system uh, out and really encourage the public to stop by uh, and give their feedback on things that they love about Livingston Parks, 
things that they'd like to see improved? Uh, and uh, what are some maybe favorite pastimes, some favorite memories that they'd like to share with us uh, as a part of the park system? Uh, from there, we're going to be using this information to really educate um, our questions for a community-wide survey, uh, which will be sent out um, in the next month or so. Uh, and that'll be something that we'll work with Grant and his team on getting out to um, the city email uh, and getting it posted at City Hall, library, uh, to make sure that we get as much uh, public comment and feedback. Uh, a little bit more in-depth questions um, based on the information and some of the trends that we start to see over the next couple of days. We'll use that information to really ask more pointed questions uh, of the community. Uh, and so once we get those results back here towards the end of this year, uh, then we'll start to analyze that, come forth with initial recommendations, have another public meeting to present our findings. Uh, and start to kind of formulate a plan, steps, short-term, long-term goals, um, and an outline of capital costs associated uh, with those recommendations. But the, the end report will really be a step-by-step -step, um, process that will work with uh, the community and city staff uh, determining, you know, what are those goals and how do we achieve those goals is that something that needs to happen right away or is it something that we've got some time or it's going to take some time uh, to come to fruition? So, uh, and that report uh, will be the first part uh, of next year. Do you have any questions? Commissioners, any questions? I have two questions. Um, I think you guys touched on it. The timeline for this master plan you're saying is probably next year. First part of next year, yeah. So when we put out the community-wide survey, um, which will be out um, next month, we leave that open for a period of two to four weeks, just making sure that we, you know, we'll probably do two different email blasts uh, with the city, Facebook posts, uh, to get as much community feedback as we can. Um, and then once we get that information, we go through and analyze everything, pair it with what we saw here in terms of our initial recommendations, um, and start to put that into um, a presentable report mm -hmm. and, and presentation that we'll come back and, and present to the public. Um, that'll be the first part of, of next year, I'd say. I can't remember exactly when we had their timeline, January uh, or so. Um, and then we'll then take that and put that into a report, which will take a couple, a couple of months. We'll go through a, a couple of draft iterations of that. Um, so it'd be, I'd say springtime of next year. Cool. Thank you. Uh, the other question I had is when was the last time we had a, a parks master plan? I think it was 2012. Yeah. 2011, 2012. Yeah. 2012. So, and usually you like to up update those at least every 10 years. Sure. So, um, so certainly, you know, in line with, with, with that recommendation, you want to, um, see kind of what you've done. If you've been able to cross some of those things off the list and okay, now that, you know, maybe some of those initial items have now impacted changes that potentially weren't anticipated. You know, a lot can happen in 10 years. Uh, and so it's always good to get those plans updated. Thank you. Other questions? Okay. I have a question too. What's the process here? Like what's, what are you looking for? This uh, from my understanding from Mr. Gager is that we are just getting an introduction of the team and the process tonight. Um, and were you looking for any input from us? Uh, we welcome any input the commission may have, but yeah, as, as the chair noted, this really is to kind of introduce you to the team, um, as, similar to what we did for downtown master plan, um, you know, kind of start the process and also raise some awareness amongst members of the public of uh, the event tomorrow evening and then the survey coming out as well. And um, correct me, uh, Will it be at the Civic Center? Are we going a presentation there or is it just at the... So there the, is the, uh, the farmer's market from 4.30 uh, until 6. And then we do have the Civic Center booked out from 6 to 8. 6 to 8, okay. Um, so we want to make sure that got out there. Yeah, I would certainly encourage you guys, you know, to come to, you know, the, oh, the focus there. group meetings yeah. or to the to the um, farmer's market. So we, you know, we... We worked with Grant on on formulating, you know, the the invites of the focus groups. Certainly want commissioner uh, support and input 
um, at those at those meetings. Can I ask some yes. questions, please? Do you really want all the commissioners to come to these things that are? Uh, it would actually be ideal, maybe, if um, we could set up some <laughs> alternate time for commissioners. Yeah. Right. Like so, are you able to yes. do that for the commission since we won't be coming to the we focus groups? Yes, in the... Absolutely. Okay. Yes. Um, I do have uh, some questions, but it might be for Mr. Gator. Go ahead. Um, so, these are some questions that came up also when we, when Quentin and I were at the farmers, excuse me. Commissioner Schwartz and I were at the oh. farmer's market last week. Will trail substrate be included in the conversations? Because I've heard more than once at the farmer's market this summer concerns about pea gravel specifically mm -hmm. not being super safe or like not user friendly for people with different abilities. So trail linkages to the parks are generally included in the scope of work. So I would imagine. And I mean like actual substrate, like what the trails are made of, mm -hmm. because some of the surfaces are not friendly mm -hmm. to kids or people on wheels. That's correct. Okay. Yes. Um, also, will Miles Park be included? That was a question that we specifically got upgrades oh, yeah. to Miles, Miles Park. Park, Miles Park. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. um, to Lindy's point, will signs be included? Sign updates? Uh, yes. And as part of a much larger, now that we have the logo and the brand name uh, largely solidified, we can begin to move forward with the larger wayfinding and signage project that's included in the growth policy. Is it possible for somebody at the city to follow up with Lindy? Just yes, I, I, I want to make sure she knows where we're at since she left. Um, yes, and, and please know we do have a miles slash second wheel agreement sign that's our team is going to put up as soon as they can get to it. I just wanted to know that we're responding because I know she's been waiting a long time mm -hmm. um, and we were waiting for a lot of things to fall in place as a city before we could update. So I want her to know she's being heard. Mm -hmm. um, also, um, are there ways that people are going to be able to engage besides just online at the farmer's market, recognizing in the focus groups, because there's a lot of people that's outside of those three demographics that are going to want to engage? Yeah, we'll also have paper copies of the survey. And then Dave, I don't know if you have any other yeah, the, the community-wide survey that we put out um, will print paper copies that people can come in and fill in if they don't want to do it online. Um, but the the focus groups and the farmer's market, well, at the farmer's market, we'll have boards and so that people can write down comments. Mm -hmm. um, but the input, if, if they don't attend a focus group meeting or the farmer's market, the input will come then through the community-wide survey. Um, or also, again, at the second public meeting, which I know, again, yeah. is another public meeting. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I'm just i just thinking from an equity stance, it's important to reach people like lots of different ways because not everybody is watching Facebook for city updates, right, or sign up to a newsletter. Um, and I'm curious about the process now that we don't have a parks committee or a tree board, um, who's going to be reviewing the drafts before it comes to the city commission? Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, that's a, a, a very excellent question. Um, you know, some of that will happen at a staff level. We also have um, worked with some, we've established some focus groups, as I mentioned. And so I imagine that we will also lean on them uh, throughout the process as well, or, you know, just kind of different touch points and, and checking in. Um, again, because people that, you know, whether they're event organizers or, you know, um, organized sports folks or, mm -hmm. you know, kind of other power users of the park, um, they're just, several different filters that will send the, the recommendations to them. I just realized it's a different process than any of the other um, plans that we've had because we've always had boards or we have committees that come through the commission to be voted on, like executive committees. Mm -hmm. And so this doesn't have any, this is just different because there's no commission involvement in helping select who's reviewing it before it gets to us. So it's yeah. just a little bit different. In our yeah, and we um, I did present to the Consolidated Land Use Board last Wednesday about the project um, because this is a bit of a planning exercise, and so uh, they are they are certainly aware of it. And um, you know, your your point is noted. Uh, it, that may prove to be a, an appropriate venue as well to to get more public feedback and comments. So I, I appreciate the suggestion. Yeah, the um, I think some of the things to know is that. We're coming up on a year, I think a couple months off a year with those two boards, the parks board and the trail board, or the, excuse me, the tree board. Um, and so folks are looking for a way to engage with the city at a deeper level than what they've had the opportunity to for a long time. 
Um, the other thing that was brought up to Commissioner Schwartz and I about park development on the north side is Reservoir Park, of course. Could you address how like Reservoir Park is going to be rolled into this since there's like a parallel planning process happening? Yeah, absolutely. So um, there are several parks that actually are not included in this parks master plan scope of work, Katie Vanell Park and Reservoir Park um, specifically, um, because Katie Vanell Park is part of the Wellness Center project and, and Reservoir, we are trying a, a different process because it largely is an undeveloped piece of land at this point. So um, those two processes will stand outside of this parks master plan process. Great. And then um... The other thing, just to note, this plan won't address it, but I think it's important to say, since it came from Northside residents, was the um, that as we develop things on the north side, we still are not talking about a crossing. Um, and so it continues to put a burden on the folks that rely on that to get home, those crossings to get home. So just I don't expect that this plan is going to fix that, but I think it's important to address that the public has come up to commissioners and said that repeatedly. Absolutely. And I'm I'm receiving the same feedback about the importance of the crossing. And, and please note at a staff level, uh, we are continuing to work on that in the absence of federal funding and plotting a path forward that does not include federal funding. So um, please expect to see more of that in front of you in the coming months. And we can include that as a part of the recommendations as well, because the more reports that you can note that, it just helps to uh, kind of make awareness of that. So we can certainly include that as a part of it. I'm sure people will bring it up at the public meeting. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. Um, yeah, I, that's all that I have at this time. Thanks, I yield. Thank you. Um, I think I just have <clears throat> one question. A lot of really great questions have already been asked. Um, in the survey, just because we sort of have this one public meeting that's happening, um, in the survey, will there be a section in that survey that's just like an open comment section to give Mm -hmm. ideas and thoughts like we really want to see this in this location and mm -hmm. so there'll be that people will be allowed to do that through the survey yes yes great any other questions we're looking forward to it yeah yeah, yeah. Well, forward to the process sounds good yeah yeah look forward to seeing her tomorrow all right. all right sounds good thanks guys Thank appreciate you. it yep okay All right, so we will move on to action item A, which is a discussion of regional water system preliminary engineering report. Mr. Gager. Thanks, Chair Kale. Uh, the item before you is a bit of a follow up to a contract that you folks awarded uh, mid summer. Uh, and that in itself is a follow up to a uh, recently completed project, the regional sewer system. And um, as we discussed during the approval of the regional sewer project, when I first joined in late 2022, uh, a, a regional water project would be um, not long uh, behind due to uh, statutory requirements to uh, deliver services to, to annex properties. And so I would invite uh, Public Works Director Shannon Holmes and, uh, and his team, including uh, our city engineer, Matt McGee, um, to come and uh, and share a little bit of a, an update on some progress um, that's been made on the regional water project uh, since the contract was awarded uh, about two months ago. Shannon. So, well, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the commission. It's been a little while since we've been up in front of you, so hope everybody's had a nice summer. Um, myself, Matt, and Adam over here, excited to present on two necessary water system improvement projects for our Northeast residents of town. Uh, as uh, Mr. Gager mentioned, uh, the first would be the Regional Water Preliminary Engineering Report, um, which TDNH has just gotten started on, and uh, we'll give you a PowerPoint over that here shortly. And then the second uh, important project is actually the Bennett Street Water Loop, which would provide some much needed redundancy on that part of town as well. So, um, Certainly will be available after the presentation to answer any questions you'll have as well. And, and I'll turn it over to Matt. Okay. Thank you. Good evening, Commissioner Gager, Mr. Gager and commissioners. Um, that was a pretty good opening summary there of what I kind of wanted to talk about. Um, I want to mention that this is an MSEP funded PER. Um, they funded 40, um, 80% and the, and the city funded 20% as a match. Um, and as Mr. Gager mentioned, 
this is kind of step two of two. Um, last year, we completed the regional sewer in September, um, and that was a big extension project. Um, and that brought us to um, now do, looking at the water. So we're just in the early stages of planning there, and the PER is kind of the first step to use as a tool for funding and public engagement. Um, and so this first slide is just kind of the roadmap for the the slides to come here, we'll look at the existing system for the project limits, um, the early alternatives that we've started to consider, um, project schedule just for the PER, um, our preliminary plan for public engagement. And then as Shannon mentioned, kind of just a quick touch on the Bennett Street water loop extension that we're just starting design on too. Um, so as you may remember, um, we're, we're talking about three developments here. Um, we've got Green Acres subdivision, Montag subdivision, and then the Sleeping Giant development. Um, Green Acres is the only one that's currently on the city's public water system. Um, and then Montag and Sleeping Giant are on shared private wells. Um, and we've talked a little bit about the Green Acres water when we did the project specific PER, but some of the issues there is that there's um, some dead end mains and I'll show some figures later in the presentation here um, that really create some issues for that subdivision. One is just kind of water quality and stagnation. Um, another one is just if you have a main break on those dead ends, it's hard one to get fire flows. Um, have inadequate fire flows because it's not looped and have redundancy in the system there. Um, and then one thing we looked at during the sewer project was the valves in the water system. We actually ended up adding a valve um, because we were getting some water main breaks during the sewer project, just as construction equipment was on the, the water main, we were getting breaks. Um, so it's a pretty fragile system. It's, it's near the end of its design life and the other thing with these dead ends that they just ran up some of the streets in Green Acres. And so there's three streets where um, residents on the other side of the block, their water service runs through, as you guys probably know, neighboring properties. So if there ever was an issue with their water service, um, kind of be an ordeal, yeah. they'd have to dig through their neighbor's property. So mm -hmm. looking at trying to eliminate that. Um, and then one thing that didn't make the presentation here, but all of the water main in Green Acres is six inch. Um, and the DEQ minimum size is eight inch. So it's undersized and um, hydraulically kind of inadequate without looping. So that's kind of the major points with the Green Acres system. Um, the Montag and Sleeping Giant, we learned a lot about during the sewer project. Those are on shared wells and they run down the alleys. There's not a lot of records there um, of how it was built, where it runs. Um, so we, we gained some information there and we look forward to having some public meetings to, I know some of the residents have plans, they run their system so they kind of know it, but learning more about that. Um, um, but basically the water quality there, I know during the sewer project, uh, Commissioner Lyons had mentioned that eliminating all those septic systems was sign of the city acting as a steward to the river. And I, in that same vein here, I think eliminating these wells that could be potentially contaminated from the local septic systems that we've now eliminated is, is a good thing. It's another positive for the project. Um, and this map that we have up here kind of shows the local um, permits that have been approved from 68 through 2020. So um, we had about 150 of them in our project last year. Um, the Sleeping Giant development has not yet connected. They weren't quite ready to go in and connect, but we've stubbed out their preferred locations so that they can connect to the sewer when they're ready. Um, so moving on to some preliminary alternatives here, um, and we are pretty early in this process, but one is to basically show the minimum improvements that we could do right now. And that is kind of leaving Green Acres as it is, adding some hydrants and some valves potentially, and then running eight inch mains 
um, through Sleeping Giant and Montag. And what that leaves out, and I'll kind of show an alternative to, is the Binion Green Acres that we talked about, and then the water main and wine glass that's lately been extended up north has a good opportunity to bring another loop up to that part of town. Um, so that's kind of the bare minimum alternative. And then as we go into what we now call alternative two, it kind of shows the full meal where you are going to extend down to the wine glass and provide loops and mains in front of everybody's house. Um, and that would be probably the far end of our alternatives. Um, and then we can make up hybrid alternatives that would cover both of these as we talk to the public and get their input. So I think when we bring this back to you as a draft report, you'll see a handful of alternatives that range between these two. Um, this schedule's a little bit outdated because we thought we might be talking to y'all last month, um, but I don't think it's impacted on the bottom line. So the kickoff meeting with the city is gonna likely happen next week. As I said, we've kind of got to start on the PER um, over the summer, just kind of collecting some information and drafting the initial alternatives. Um, I think we're still on, on course for the September desktop review and then our plan over the next three months is to have three public meetings um, with the residences and then go through these alternatives and, like I said, gain information about the systems that are out there. Um, and the goal is to still finalize the report by end of the year. We left construction as kind of a TBD because I think we'll learn a lot more about what that's going to look like as we develop the report. Anything to add there, Shannon, before I... So obviously public input's uh, a very significant part of this project. And uh, so we will we'll probably host our meetings up at the field house and we'll make sure that they're in the evenings when people are home from work and more than likely have a virtual um, option for people to attend as well. We want, we want as many folks to be able to attend and provide comments as we can. Yeah, and so that kind of goes into that next one. And that was sort of, our program with the last, the sewer project, and that worked really well, was having evening meetings. And um, and I think just to tag on to that, doing a PER is really a good tool for funding in the future. Um, and that was one of the big reasons for going through this planning process. Um, and then here's the, sorry, this last slide is just the Bennett Water Loop Extension Project. Um, this, it connects some existing mains, one in Bennett Street, and then over to US Highway 89. Overall, this is a pretty straightforward project. It's about 700 feet of 10 inch pipe. Um, the one challenge that we've found right now is that we will need to bore under the railroad. There is no casing at that location. So um, we're, we've started kind of talking with BNSF and MDT on some other projects and kind of told them this one's coming. So that'll be, there'll be a heavy agency engagement there. Um, but we did get started on this. We surveyed the limits last week and we'll start designing agency coordination right now. I, I think just this, this benefits the hospital. So this gives us, uh, reduces a dead end main by about 1100 feet. So from O Street, is where that main starts. So that'll help with hospital and it'll also help with the wellness center <laughs> significantly. And this also complements the regional water uh, extension project that we are, are gonna be planning to do through the PER process. So yeah. big, big benefit to the East End of town. And that's sort of on a similar design schedule into the year um, because we're hoping that this in parallel with the INI &I study would be 2025 construction. So bidding early next year and hopefully getting both those projects um, in 2025. So I think that's the end of the presentation. We're happy to take any questions on either project. Thanks, Matt. Yeah. Mr. Gager, what are you looking for from us this evening? Uh, you know, we uh, we do welcome any questions or feedback that the commission may wish to offer at this time. Uh, again, 
that you know we do recognize the, the impact that the regional sewer project had on residents in this area of town and uh, recognizing that wanted to um, you know, raise awareness of this early, let the community know that this is something that we are actively working on um, and follow up to that other project. And so uh, we'll stand for any questions you may have or comments. Thank you. Commissioners. Yeah, Commissioner just Schwartz. one, um, just to clarify, where exactly is Sleeping Giant? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think I know, but because there's it, a Sleeping we, Giant past. Uh, it's the trailer park. It's the a trailer park. Or Skillman. Okay. That, trailer park is between Miles and Garnier. Yeah. So on that alternative two map, it's up. Right. right here. It would be that blue line on Miles down to Miller. Okay. Down Miller, Frank Street, McCall, right in that. Yeah. Correct. Okay. That's what I, I thought because there's a sleeping giant of states out mm -hmm. west of town. So they're out Willow Creek. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So this sleeping giant community, I'm not mm -hmm. sure if you're aware, but um, Neighbor Works We're, Montana yeah. worked with them similar to the View Vista community. Right. So um, we've been partners with them, you know, really started with View Vista and it continued with the regional sewer project and and including them in this PER uh, was very important to the city and Absolutely. for neighbor works and the residents mm -hmm. there. So, yeah, because they're boiling, they throw yeah, yeah. the water's coming and stuff. So, I just wanted to make, I thought I knew where it was. I just wanted to, you know, in my mind, know where exactly it's at and people listening at home. So, mm -hmm. Thank you. That's all I have. Anything, Commissioner Lyons? Oh, no, I thought you were mm -hmm. giving Vice Chair Newts. Um, I have a question. I think you said that eight inch mains were required now by DEQ. That's the minimum. Yeah. So yeah. I'm curious, like why over on wine glass lane, we have new six inch mains and not part of town if eight inch is the requirement. Yeah. And I apologize. Our legend is a little bit difficult. We kind of threw these together. Um, oh, is that quickly. actually an eight inch? It's actually an eight inch because okay, it's great. not new. So, okay, thank um, you. That's existing. We'll, we'll yeah. clarify this map a little better in the report. But thank you. It so it's, I just misread the. So the six inch are like the Miles Lane and Garnier, or are those eight inch? Yeah. So if you go to alternative one. Yeah, that's what I'm trying. Okay. Yeah. So your six inch, I can't. Is Maple ten? No, it's, it's all six inch. It's six six inch. The Bigford Lane. Um, is all the 10 inch AC pipe that was put in in 1959. But oh, anything feeding Brookstone, so the existing orange from say miles towards um, down Garnier to Bennett in that yeah. area is all eight inch that was put in okay. about six years ago. Right. Okay. When they developed that. Okay. So, so all the, the six inches, the just the new six inch and the eight inch lines are like very similar in color. And yeah, they're different. supposed to be okay. double lines, but they're not showing up. Very okay. Well here. Thank you. Yeah. Um, that was one question I had. The other, the other is I just the importance of public outreach. I'm glad you all have a plan. I know this part of town is persistent in their um, responses to the commission about the desire for really effective public engagement. So the more that can be the focus, the better I think for the commission to like comments are better landing with you who can actually help them and us. Um, so thank you. And the last thought that I have really is, um, well, not the last thought, but one thought is just recognizing how much disruption is happening in this part of town um, with the water and now the sewer and then soon the wellness center. And I think it's probably gonna get pretty fatiguing pretty quickly. In addition, that school off of Wama Lane that's in the county, I think um, it would be great if we had a plan for this part of town to minimize disruption for you know, their neighborhood and their way of life. I think it's going to get probably pretty old pretty fast. Um, so if there's a way we can coordinate work on projects that it doesn't affect people's quality of life, I think that could be fantastic. Yeah. Well, like meeting the needs of the people who live there, just recognizing that it's going to be a lot of action for a while mm -hmm. that they can't really escape. So that's my two that's cents. What's that? That's a good point. 
yeah, I mean, I'm sure there's ways to mitigate that. That's stuff you think about all the time, but just putting that in the front of the room, I think is helpful, maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's all. I yield. If I may add, you. you know, if they do it the way they did it on my street two years ago, I'd be very happy. <laughs> it was an outstanding yeah. job with minimal impact, so. You know, we we, ha we had a rough start with the Montag residents through the regional sewer project. And um, we got got to meet a lot of those, uh, all those folks through that process. And, you know, I'm really looking for the city to really represent itself well and be very open and transparent. Um, I think it's important to say that, you know, we're, we're not defining a construction timeline for this yet. We, right. we really need to go through the PER process, figure out all the alignments, the probable cost estimates, and then this this document really puts us in a great position for for going after uh, grants, mm -hmm. similar to the ARPA funding that we received for you know the regional sewer. So our goal is to obviously bring the cost of this project as low as we possibly can <clears throat> for the for the folks in this area. But back to what Mr. Gager said, state law requires us to be planning to provide critical infrastructure for newly annexed properties within a reasonable time, which is, I think, defined as a five-year period. So this, this plan really puts us, allows us to comply with that state law requirement. And um, once it's complete, um, commission, the residents of that area know where the water mains are gonna be put in the ground. They know approximately what that cost estimate is going to be and how we're going to share those costs to, to make it come to fruition. So. Thank you. Other commissioners? <clears throat> Commissioner Lyons? Um, I really appreciate uh, Vice Chair Nunes' comment about like thinking about how disruptive this is going to be. You know, I think like it was emotionally disruptive when they were annexed into town. And, um, you know, we've all we've experienced that through the outreach and the interactions they've done. Um, and then this process is going to be the time where it's physically disruptive. And um, so I think like considering a careful, like carefully considering sequencing and how these impacts are going to be compounding and, and um, so forth, I think is very important, but you know, you all are experts at that. Um, but I appreciate that comment. I think that that's um, spot on. You know, I know that there's no intention at this table of um, any imminent annexation in the future of Livingston. But we need to think about this as a model and how folks will consider what annexation looks like if that ever comes to fruition. So this is our, our opportunity <laughs> to show what that process looks like if if that ever were to happen again um and so not that you need any more stress but this is th this is going to be this is going to be how the model of annexation is conceived in the mm -hmm. medium and long term future uh so while that's a huge responsibility it's also an opportunity um and i'm just kind of at one, these might be things that you're already considered considering, but uh, just wanted to kind of outline the importance of how this might go because it really does. It it creates a model of what annexation looks like in Livingston, and so we need to be careful with that responsibility. Mm -hmm. So I I appreciate your comment very much, and you're probably aware of this, but. You know, we have about 20 residents that off a lot of lane and Bickford Lane that are still in the county. Mm -hmm. We're going to have water, a water system totally surrounding them. So the thought of maybe that being a possibility in the future is certainly going to go into the planning phases of where the water mains are going to be placed. And, mm -hmm. and you know, state law requires if a septic system fails, they're going to have to get the cost of replacing that septic system versus connecting to the city infrastructure based on, you know, the 300 foot distance. And the same could apply for a well going dry or a well being contaminated. So um, I appreciate that. That thought is in our minds and, and it's going to be brought out. And, and I wouldn't be surprised if some of those residents don't attend 
uh, some of the public meetings just just to be in the loop of what's happening. Unintended or. <laughs> And I think, as I mentioned, this is part two of two, and I, we learned a lot meeting with them on the sewer and what worked and what didn't. And it's just a lot of a lot of meetings. I mean, we met weekly during construction. We met monthly, all the way through planning, and that goes a long way with them to. It it does that. That's how that's how you build trust by doing that consistently. And what I, I was actually just giving a presentation in my day job. Um, about community engagement, uh, and I'm just going to share one one element, which is that 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 engagement and and that maintenance of trust isn't only critical at the beginning, but it's critical that you continue to share that information as as things go on, and you're no longer statutorily required to do that community engagement. That that trust will erode really quickly if they stop hearing from you. Mm -hmm. um, and even if you don't need any more information from them, mm -hmm. provide them with updates of what's happening. And that is a really critical component of maintaining that trust. Mm -hmm. I like to say that I've had a seven-year marriage with Green Acres <laughs> residents. And unfortunately, um, we didn't have that uh, with the Montag residents in their annexation on what September 7th, 2021, we, we did a, a, a PER for the Green Acres residents. It did not include the Montag residents at the time. So I feel like, I don't want to speak for the Green Acres residents, but I feel like we've established a level of trust with them, with that, that community uh, interaction. Right. And we hope to build that with the Montag residents through this one. And it's, it's, it's hard one and easily lost. Mm -hmm. as I'm sure you're aware. Mm -hmm. um, so just keep that in mind. And, and again, um, to just reiterate my original point, this is this is the model that will be shared with, with any county residents that are ever ever here get wind of, of a concept of annexation. Mm -hmm. So it's a big responsibility, but a big opportunity. Yeah. I yield. Thank you, Commissioner Lyons. Commissioner Willis, anything? Um, no, I'm just kind of digesting what I got going on here. I, I guess a quick question is when do you know the six eight uh, six inch and in green acres, which is I guess not allowable anymore, not permissible, a lot of water. Uh when was that put in? In the early 60s. So, early, 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 early. so the AC pipe, the 10 inch that connected to the city was done in 1959. And sure. shortly thereafter they created the network of six inch off of that 10 inch AC pipe. <laughs> so it's it's getting past its useful life and being that it's undersized and not looped, um, there's a lot of room for improvement. Got it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I would add a couple of things. Um, go ahead. To Commissioner Lyon's point, I, it was like less than a year ago I was knocking on doors in Green Acres and Montag. And I would say that I don't think that all of the community is trusting in the city because people said some pretty frank, honest things to me, which is great and I appreciate it, but not everybody is trusting the city yet. So I think we still have work to do to repair because those people are Livingston residents. Um, and even if they weren't, they still matter, but they are Livingston residents. And so we should listen to them. I don't know if you also heard that, but I certainly did. Yeah, um, I emotional disruption was a good descriptor, I think mm -hmm. too. I think people still feel um, like they need some more information. Obviously we can't go back in time and like redo history or anything like that, but I think we can, you know, sort of eat some humble pie where we weren't the best communicators as a city, all of us included, right? Eat some exactly. humble pie, own our mistakes and um, work to do better moving forward. Um, the other thing is I really appreciated your comment about how silence is a way to erode trust. And there's some very large projects on that sort of side of town that the public hasn't heard about for a while that are coming specifically the wellness center. Um, that's concerning because it's gonna be very, very impactful to the people everywhere, but especially in that part of town. So if there is a way to like communicate openly and transparently with the public about all of these projects, I think that will go a long way. Otherwise it doesn't look good. We're not hiding anything, but it, it could appear that we are if we're not talking openly about where things are. So thank you for offering that Commissioner Lyons. I totally agree. Okay. Thank Thanks. you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, commissioners. I think you've asked all my questions. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but, oh, I yes. think have one more question for you. Are you going to allow the public to speak? Because okay. I see Green Acres residents yes, here. Yes, okay, I am. Great. I'm just headed in that direction. Um, I want to make sure they have a chance. Yes, to absolutely. This is an action forward. item, and we absolutely will do that. Thank you. Um, okay. It. Yes. So we will go ahead now. We don't, we're not looking for a motion this evening, um, but I do want to open it up to public comment. This is a, an action item this evening. So gentlemen, thank you for the presentation. Thank you. Um, thank you. you. Maybe stick around through this little portion that'd be great um and if there's any public comment we'll start in the room come on up put your name and sign in there and then give us your name and address and, and i'm just not trying to put pressure on green acres residents yeah no, that's because we're montag just <laughs> oh, montag. i'm sorry patty <laughs> my I'm, it's my mistake montag didn't know that's okay Mont yeah exactly. i call it montague okay. I, was, yeah, I, I wanted to ask you i have no montague. idea i've just been there for a hundred since you years. live there you get to dictate i call it montague, oh, but I call the surveyors call it's it montague, montague. Yeah. <laughs> and so patty for the record we'll patty your, smith thank you 115 <laughs> all spot um and i've dealt with i know what mr lyons means about emotional mm -hmm. stress mm -hmm. Because of the fourplex that went in across from my house, I swear, like every other week, they were digging up all Spa Street. And I don't know who the engineering firm was. It wasn't TD and H, that's for sure. Um, but I was never notified when they were going to be closing my street. Um, and so it was very, I never knew if I was going to be able to get out or not. Mm -hmm. And they would never come and say, we're going to have your street closed today. Do you want to get a car out or anything? Um, so, yeah. But um, I heard them say that, I thought Matt said that we would have to abandon our wells. And I was under the understanding that even if we hook up the city water, we could still use our well to water our lawns. Mm -hmm. um, so what I'm going to have you do is keep yeah, talking, that, that's ask, that. ask and then questions, and then we'll see. I want to say them. that Shannon Holmes still hasn't earned my trust yet because when we were annexed into the city and the first time that we heard that we were going to have to be a part of the sewer project I went to the first meeting and he said there would be two more meetings and there were no more meetings um, except the one saying hey we're going to start hooking you up to the sewer in February so I really hope they follow through this time and have the meetings because Montague at, at addition did not get the the time to learn what was going on and everything like Green Acres did. So thank you. Thank you, Patty. More public comment in the room. Come on up if you'll sign in and then just give us your name and address for the record. I'm Patty Ottman. Um, I'm a resident of Montague slash Montag. <laughs> um, I spoke at the commission meeting a year or two ago about um, the lack of communication specifically for the, the Montag residents at the time. Um, and the city promised they would do a better job this next time around. So I'm really glad to hear, you know, some of the things that were said tonight about that. I would just like a couple reminders. Um, and this is feedback that I got um, from some of the local people in my neighborhood, mostly elderly people. They're not on Facebook. They don't know how to get on the internet to look at the city website. Mm -hmm. um, so I would just ask when <clears throat> these meetings are scheduled that in addition to all the other great things that you guys do, that everyone who's tech savvy mm -hmm. sees that, that you take these people into consideration, you know, maybe a mailing to the mailboxes, some signs in the neighborhood, mm -hmm. um, those sorts of things. The other thing I would ask is that, and I think I heard um, either Shannon or Matt say that the these first series of meetings would be scheduled, you know, a date and a time that are appropriate mm -hmm. that people can attend mm -hmm. because the weekly meetings that we had for the sewer extension project were on Tuesday mornings at nine o'clock. So if you're retired, it's great. But if you work, you can, you never have the opportunity to go and hear what's said. And there was, I mean, sometimes minutes would go up on the city website but that wasn't consistent in terms of keeping people engaged and informed if they were not able to attend the meeting so i would just like to ask the city to do a better job with that this time also 
And then the other thing I kind of want to comment on is just the timeline. Um, I know you all know we just wrapped up the sewer project. Um, we just had our whole backyard dug up four months ago mm -hmm. um, and put it all back together as it did many other people in our neighborhood. And we're a year out from having all the roads completely torn up. Um, we went from February until last August with the roads being a disaster. I know you guys all know that. It was like a war zone sometimes in Green Acres for people just trying to get out their driveways. Mm -hmm. um, so I would want to hear in these meetings how that's not going to happen the next time around, how the city's going to do a better job with that. Um, the other thing is I would just like to ask the city to be um, uh, just kind of sensitive to the financial impact that this has on a lot of the residents. Again, many who are elderly mm -hmm. on a fixed income that had to shell out, you know, a fairly significant amount of money just recently for the sewer project, um, both for the city mains, and then they had to shell out more money to get their backyards dug up and the sewer lines installed in their backyards. And so everyone has taken a financial hit mm -hmm. very recently because of the sewer project. So I would just like to ask the city to be kind of um, transparent mm -hmm. about what the financial costs are going to be to the residents so that people know going well in, in advance going into this what our share of the cost is going to be um, I think that's really important and I think if that happens then maybe the city will be able to regain a little bit of the trust because I think there's people in um, mm -hmm. both neighborhoods Montague and Green Acres that were not happy with how mm -hmm. the sewer project was handled so um, the only other thing I, I will mention, and I, I know what you said, Grant, about um, once the once area is annexed, there's a certain amount of time where you have to provide the infrastructure. And I don't know whether this was accurate or not, but I will say that the question, and I think you're going to get this question at these meetings, why did we separate out the sewer and the water if we're going to turn around and do them so close mm -hmm. together? Mm -hmm. And so we were told at multiple, on multiple occasions by City of Livingston employees mm -hmm. at these weekly meetings, people would ask, why are, why are we, you know, why are we not doing the water too? Mm -hmm. um, and it was stated on multiple occasions that the water was not a priority for the City of Livingston, Livingston that it would be three to five years before this water project started. Whether that's accurate or not, I have no idea. I'm just letting you know that that was said, and I think you're going to get questions about that mm -hmm. because, honestly, it makes no sense to me why I have to pay, mm -hmm. you know, thousands of dollars to get my backyard dug up and thousands of dollars to contribute to the city's sewer mains, and I've got to turn around a year later and do it all over again. Mm -hmm. It doesn't make sense mm -hmm. to me, but I don't know much about that, so that's all I have to say. Thank, Thank you, Caddy. Right on time, too. Nicely done and really wonderful feedback. Thank you. Anyone else in the room? We'll go online. Uh, is there anyone online that would like to make public comment? You can feel free to raise your hand or just come off mute and give us your name. I'll ask one more time online or in the room. Okay. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and post public comment. Got a couple questions in there. I'd like to try to get answered if that works, Trisha. Can I ask a clarifying question? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Real quick, okay. just to come in. Yeah. This is for Patty number two. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's because not everybody in Mo, everybody in Montague is named Patty, but everybody tonight is. Yeah. And we're in the same block. That's incredible. And you're I both guess. wearing purplish sure as well. well. Yeah, we sure well. That's hard for HOA rules right there. <laughs> Got to be named Patty. How much advance notice did you have about the cost for the sewer project? You because you made a point that you, it would be nice to have as much mm -hmm. lead time as possible to financially prepare. Yeah, and in the from the city with a um, long and it had every property listed out and it had what your cost would be based on your square footage. And then we had, I think, about a month, a month. to decide yeah. whether we were going to pay up front 
and mm -hmm. save some money in the long run. Mm -hmm. And I'll just tell you, we, me and my husband, we paid nine thousand dollars for that, and in doing so, we saved ourselves money over the course of twenty years because if we had allowed it to raise our taxes. That would have been over twenty thousand dollars over the course of twenty years with interest from the bonds and such. Okay. So we had about a month to come up with that. Okay. Plan. I just want to repeat it for the recording for the record. So you had about a month from the time you had something in writing till you and your household members had to make a decision about how you were going to finance the cost. And for your individual property, it was nine thousand if you could pay in one, one, yeah, one payment. Okay. Thank you. That's you helpful. If you paid it that right, yeah, right. Finance it by having your yep. taxes raised. Thank you. I just that's helpful to hear the timeline. Thank you. Sorry, thank you. No, you're, fine. you're welcome. Of course. Um, so Patty number one asks <laughs> about wells and if they would be if we would have to abandon wells or could they still be used for irrigation purposes. Um, we do have allowances for irrigation wells within the city code, and so mm -hmm. um, they are not forbidden. I, will, I can say that individual properties, I, I don't have the information at my hand to comment on specific properties, but irrigation wells do exist. Okay. Um, and if somebody wanted more information about a specific property, they may be able to reach yeah. out Please to reach you. Out to the public works department or, or to my office parks. as well. Okay. Yeah. And then you can look that specific property up. Yeah. Um, and then and I don't know if we're if we have the information to answer this tonight or if we're coming. Um, the why did we separate the two projects? Why did we do one and not the other at the same time? You know, I've I've got the public works director here. My understanding, and I'll, I'll allow him and and the team to chime in if they see fit. But my understanding is is really there was uh, a few things at play, um, but one really was that large cost uh, burden that the residents would face from doing all of the work at once. Um, and there was you know time and effort. We heard tonight that it would be about nine thousand. So or it was about 9,000 in one person's experience. So to have that additional cost burden all at one time, uh, I think, um, you know, my predecessor and, and some others made a, a determination that that would be perhaps a little onerous for the community. Okay. And I'll, I'm going to ask one more question, which I feel like was maybe in some of these comments. Um, will the water project be as disruptive as the sewer project? With the digging, like the roads and the yards and the... If fundamentally, they are very similar projects, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And so, um, but I think we heard from, uh, you know, the, the director and, and uh, the city engineer that there were some lessons learned. And um, I, I think we, we can do uh, perhaps a little better, but unfortunately, yeah. we're digging up roads and connecting houses to pipes. So. Thank you. Commissioners, any, any last questions? Comments, questions? I'll just triplicate with everybody else that the public information is a critical component, um, at least from my world of wildland fire. Like if it's a, if it's a certain chapter of the incident command handbook is public information officer. And if you have more data, more information, <coughs> just, it helps it, it just helps people feel better mm -hmm. so that's all i have to add thank you over communication is key <laughs> yeah say. all right anything else commissioners um, i would just say that i also had to connect to to city sewer and so i have sympathy for the disrupt the, the disruptive nature of the process and for the financial burden so um i personally went through that and so i'm sensitive to uh, what you all are experiencing. Um, you know, I think it's it's good for us to have this conversation publicly because it it really does, I think, uh, create some accountability on at least on on this side of the table. Um, and I I think that I speak for all my fellow commissioners that we feel that accountability and we hope that we can um, continue to improve the process and have it be less disruptive. Okay. Anything else? I would um, offer uh, supportive comments to the patties about the roads. They were so bad. I 
it's no secret I live on the north side I would drive through about once a week just to see how it was going with the roads and it was embarrassing how bad they were um, people don't live in the city to have roads like that if roads like that were in the county people would be coming to the county commissioners mm -hmm. every meeting and they probably do and so um, if there is a way you know it'd be great if there's a way so that all the roads weren't like that at once so that people in the neighborhood had at least like I, and I don't know I'm not like a road expert or anything but I'm sure there's folks in the room who are so if there's some way to mitigate so that not everything is torn up at the same time to make it a little easier for you folks, that sure would be nice because that was really bad. I agree. The ruts were like, uh -huh. like, yeah. made Nebraska roads look, look, look smooth. Look smooth. <laughs> yep. Yes. Yes. I saw some nasty puddles. Mm -hmm. It was bad. Pretty bad. Thank yeah. you. You're welcome. Okay. We're good. All right. Good. Thank you for coming in this evening, all of you. Um, Thank okay, you. well, let's move on then. No, no motion needed here. So we're moving on to action item B, uh, which is ordinance 3055, an ordinance of the City Commission of the City of Livingston, Montana, amending chapter two of the Livingston Municipal Code entitled Government and Administration to conform noticing provisions to state law, reflect the existence of the city clerk position, modify city commission voting rules, acknowledge a new federal holiday, and make technical and conforming changes. Mr. Gager. Thank you, Chair Kale. The item for you this evening, as you noted, is Ordinance 3055, which amends Chapter 2 of the Livingston Municipal Code uh, to reflect some recent operational changes as well as statutory changes that were made in the uh, recently ended legislative session. And so uh, attached to the staff report, is a uh, red line of chapter two or the effective portions thereof, I should <laughs> clarify. And um, primarily we are re replacing uh, references to recording secretary with city clerk. Um, as you know, we have uh, included now a full-time city clerk in the budget. And, uh, and then uh, importantly for, uh, for you folks, um, section 2-15, uh, regarding quorum of meeting, we are not changing, we're not seeking or proposing to change uh, a, a quorum from consisting of, of three commission members. However, um, current municipal code includes a, a slightly unique feature um, that, that states that three uh, votes are required to uh, adopt or reject a motion. And um, that is a bit unique statewide. I believe we only locate one other municipality that has that requirement in the state of Montana. Um, typically, a motion passes with a, a majority of the members present. And so uh, you may recall we had a situation this summer uh, where we had two members that were absent, and so we had three commissioners present. Uh, we were still able to have a quorum, um, but had one of those commissioners um, not been in favor of one of the items before them, or uh, again, if two had been not in favor and one was in favor, um, the, the item actually would not have passed and would have been brought back before uh, the commission at a subsequent meeting. And so uh, upon the recommendation of legal counsel, um, this is, this is a, a, a change that we are seeking to make. And then uh, I would also point out that uh, the Juneteenth uh, holiday is, is now a federal holiday uh, recognized in June by the federal government. And so uh, our handbook and our collective bargaining agreements uh, do call for recognition of that holiday. Uh, so we just wanted to conform municipal code uh, with, with the rest of our, our documents there. So uh, that is a, a summary of the, the recommended changes. Um, and I will, before I stand for any questions, I would also note um, there was a state law uh, change that changed the noticing requirements. And so uh, section 2-12 uh, slightly modifies the, the noticing requirements, really just to state that in addition to the official posting board, we'll also uh, act in accordance with the requirements of Montana code annotated as they may change. So uh, again, stand for any questions you may have. Commissioners, clarifying questions. Uh, Commissioner Lyons. Um, so please excuse me if I'm... Um, misinterpreting what I'm reading. Uh, but on page 50 of the packet, uh, regarding the quorum and the um, required A's or I's or nays, um, I don't see the red line 
effectively making the chain? That's uh, an excellent question, Commissioner. I've actually mistaken it. So the part that's crossed out, it's uh, it's supposed to be the affirmative vote of um, a majority of the commissioners present. So I have the city attorney and I have gotten in each other's way on that. Okay, so it should read the 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 new language should read the form the affirmative vote of the majority of commissioners present at the meeting. That's correct. Not three. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I was wondering what that two was for. Well. Um, and uh, that's all. I apologize for the uh, the inconvenience there. As I said, a couple people editing this. <laughs> no problem. Will you state that one more time for us, please? Yes. So that the second sentence in section two fifteen should read. The affirmative vote of a majority of commissioners present at a meeting shall be necessary to adopt or reject any motion, resolution, or ordinance, or pass any measure unless a greater number is required by law. Um, may I jump in again? Yes, I'm sorry. I just want to... So I want to, you know, just produce a scenario here. So uh, we have a quorum when there are three commissioners. So in order, if there is only, if there are only three commissioners, two votes in the affirmative are necessary for an item to pass. Or be rejected. That is correct. Yes. yes. Well, no, two in the affirmative are required yes. for it to pass. Yep. Uh, although if the motion, yes, two, two votes passes the motion and three are present. Okay. Yes, thank you. And then I guess, well, let's keep doing scenarios. If there are four present, it would require three in the affirmative. That is correct. Unless state law required more than that. Are there specific mm -hmm. decisions where state law requires a certain number? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, the most immediate example I can think of is uh, changing zoning. And what, what does state law say for that? I believe that uh, we would require four fifths in that situation. Okay. The super majority. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so if, we would need a full, we would need all commissioners and four out of five. Well, if four were present, then three would hit, hit the super majority that vice chair needs. Mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Three out of four is not. Three out of four is a super, it's a super majority, super majority. Yeah. but it's not four fifths. No, I, the requirement is a super majority. Yeah. 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 Not four fifths. Okay. But, but if there were three, two would be insufficient. Or a zoning. Or uh, no, because that would be a super majority at 66%. Right. Mm -hmm. Two thirds. So is it like the super Senate, majority senatorial of definition of super majority? So, yeah. but, <laughs> we, um, this actually came up this, know, right. this summer, um, and we did the scenario with the, the city attorney um, leading to that, that meeting. And so I do believe that that would be two thirds of. Can confirm it at the next reading mm -hmm. of the ordinance when the yep. attorney will be here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, could we kind of go through all those scenarios in the, on our second reading? I think that would be helpful. Yeah, I think it would, if I may, I'm stepping yeah, on your toes. Um, yeah. I think it would be helpful if we dealt with, particularly looked at some of those where it's a super majority or two thirds vote and really dig into is that two thirds of the entire commission or of the quorum? No, it, I, I, we've looked at it before, and I'll have the city attorney okay. um, present those findings as we've reviewed them in the past. Yeah, just for the for those special circumstances, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, you know, you know. Um, just because <clears throat> this code that's quoted, the last sentence of this section two point, or excuse me, two dash fifteen, um, emergency budget appropriations and adopted by two thirds of the members of a governing body who are present. Okay, okay. so yeah, it, I think there's. There's some other Livingston Municipal Code that requires a super majority. And I don't know if it we indicate if it's people present or if it's members of the whole body. I believe it is the zoning section related to a zoning change. And I, I but we will get there's confirm. there's a section where commissioners can remove other commissioners from a meeting. And I'm not saying that, that I correct. ever expect that that's yeah. going to happen. I just yes. happen to have this. <laughs> right. I don't know that that would ever happen, but it certainly would be nice to have that conversation. Not Absolutely. when a commission in the future would need to do yeah. that. Um, I appreciate the specificity in the example. I know that that's like a, 
but yeah. you're right. It's an uncomfortable. But it could happen. Yeah. It could happen. Not this commission. Yeah. Some other commission. Nobody wants to have that conversation in the midst of that happening. No, mm -hmm. somebody, yeah. not us. Not us. Um, the other, mm -hmm. if I may, yeah. the other um, point is, I think Commissioner Lyons, um, when he was describing something, addressed a concern that I have. The language adopt or reject any motion. I wonder if we could reconsider that language to be more clear where we could just say, I don't know if this is the best language we can ask an attorney, but shall be necessary necessary to pass a motion. Otherwise, I think the implication is, right? Because if a motion isn't made, if a motion is made in the affirmative and it doesn't pass, we didn't make a motion to reject and there wasn't a vote to reject. It's just that the motion didn't pass. So there might be a way to clean up this language so we're not having to make two motions on everything. Does that make sense? It does. Um, I am happy to chat with 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 city attorney. Please know we've had several groups of attorneys look at this, as you know, over the course of the last two years that I've been here. Yeah. And this was the language with the exception of the typographical error. This was the language that those groups of attorneys came to. So I'll happily put that back to them. But I just have never seen this anywhere in any <clears throat> voting anything in all the code that I've ever read where it says adopt or reject because I think it implies they have to vote to reject something when not passing is a rejection although that's not explicit necessarily in a motion so just to simplify for future potential contentious votes and that could be like a thing to clarify. Okay. Um, and I know since I've been on the commission, I know this was a, there's like the hidden curriculum, the written curriculum of being a commissioner and the hidden curriculum was how to make motions in the affirmative or not. And I don't mm -hmm. think that we changed that, but this implies, I don't know, there's been different implications from yeah. different chairs over time about how to make motions. Yeah, it's, it's been, yeah, kind of, yeah. You can't make a motion on the okay, negative. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't know that. But that's yeah. Well, so if there's a way to like perhaps address that and just clean it up so it's less confusing moving forward, I think that would be helpful. That little phrase. That would. Yeah. Um. <clears throat> we will have the city attorney weigh in on that. Yeah. Absolutely. Um. And I think Commissioner Lyons already got to my other question about majorities and super majorities. So thanks. That's my big thing from this section. This and is just clarifying, this right? This is clarifying okay. questions. So it's going to remind us <laughs> just about Just to remind everybody. Vice Chair Newt, you still have the floor. Mm, I'm done. Okay. Any other clarifying questions, Commissioners? No? Okay. Except I'd like to make a motion takes five minutes before we go to public comment when okay. you deem that necessary. Okay. I will. We will do that. Absolutely. Um, I'm going to ask Commissioner, excuse me, I'm going to ask Mr. Gager. So we've got this, we've kind of fixed the, the typo in here for, and now we've discussed this other portion. Can we make a motion to move this forward? And you're going to bring this, you're going to check in on the rest of this at the, I just want to check in for clarity here. If if the commission's comfortable moving it forward, uh, that is an option. If you folks would like to defer action until a, a subsequent meeting, uh, may just ask that you continue the public hearing to a date certain to do so. Commissioners, mm -hmm. um, there's one more reading of this, and then after that, it's a uh, two weeks, and then we vote. Mm -hmm. good, good, okay. So we'll see this two more times. See it one more time. Oh uh, yeah, one more time. Or one, one more, more time. time. So we can vote on it tonight with the fixed with the edit that was just a, a typo. Um and then look at it, we'll look at it again and then vote it forward. But that's all up to you. Do we want one more I'm attempt to it? hear what the legal uh opinion is on the approve or reject? Like that was a, a substantive change potentially to that paragraph. We may want to hold off. I, I, I would offer 
not only the city attorney, but the insurance company's attorney have looked at that language, and that is the recognized That's language right. from our city attorney as well as the insurance company and their attorney. So um, we can bring it back and have a discussion with them present, but sure. All right, that alleviates my concern. Oh, Commissioner Lyons. Uh, my take is that the the spirit of what we're doing will remain the same. Um, and we, we really just need like technical clarification on, on, you know, I think if we had, if the city attorney were here today, we'd probably be able to, to get through it. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't think that the, the spirit of the, um, of the code is likely to change, even if there are going to be some changes to verbiage. So, um, you know, folks know what we're voting on. They know the direction that we're voting on it. There's going to be another public, public opportunity to participate in that. That seems sufficient to me. So I'm, I'm comfortable uh, moving it forward. So I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve the first reading of ordinance 3055 with the edits to section 2-15 regarding quorum. I have a motion by Schwartz. So second. a second. Was a second by, by Lyon? Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. All right. So may I have a motion for a 10 minute break? You make a motion to take a 10 minute break. Second. Mm -hmm. yeah. A motion by Schwartz and a second by Newt. All in favor? Aye. 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 We will be back in 10 minutes. So that'll be. Drinking much coffee. Drink seven of all right, welcome back. We're going to go ahead and call back to order this uh, meeting of the city commission. Um, it's 7.08 p.m. Um, and so we have got a motion on the table um, for ordinance 3055. Uh, and we will go ahead and open it up to public comment. Is there anyone in the room that would like to make public comment? Anyone online? Would anyone online like to make public comment on Ordinance 3055? Feel free to come off mute. Give us your name. One more time. Any public comment? All right. Seeing none, we'll go ahead and close public comment. Thank you, Vice Chair. That's right. <laughs> Thank you for getting up. Um, so, commissioners, any deliberation, further discussion on Ordinance 3055? I'll make a comment. Okay. Um, I'm glad to see Juneteenth recognized as a federal holiday. Mm -hmm. and long time of coming, way too long. And, uh, I'm glad we observe it. I yield. Thank you. Other comments or deliberation? All right. Thank you. Uh, roll call, please. Chair Kale. Four. Vice Chair Newt. Four. Commissioner Schwartz. Four. Commissioner Lyons. Four. Commissioner Willich. Four. Motion carries. That leads us to. City manager comments, Mr. Gager. Um, thank you, Chair Kale. I uh, note to the city commission, I will be out of the office early next week attending the uh, city manager's conference in Pittsburgh. And so I uh, hope to learn more from my colleagues there. And then the following week, uh, right after our next meeting, we will be in uh, West Yellowstone for the League of Cities and Towns. So. Uh, I will be available by phone and email, but might not be in person a few days next week and also the following. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner comments. Commissioner Willich? Uh, two yeah. different things. Uh, many, I guess. Um, I got to ride in the new garbage truck last week. Um, Mark, is that gentleman's name? Matt. 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 Uh, it took me for a ride, and we went to the dump. It's very cool. The new machine is super nice. Surprisingly, it has two steering wheels and sets of pedals and everything. So that's mm, <laughs> kind of wild when you get into it. And uh, 30,000 pounds of garbage per day. The waste collection picks up. 
And the one machine picks up 900 cans a day with the yarn. So uh, I thought that was pretty pretty good to know. And we have, I believe, a new machine coming as well uh, that's been on order for a little while. You guys ordered that up. And that should make uh, garbage collection in our city just that much more seamless. So that was, uh, that was very cool. I'm glad I got to go uh, on that. And also, I wanted to uh, perhaps speak to, if anybody's listening, with Burlington Northern. Um, they've moved all of the cars off of the tracks, if you haven't noticed. We can see from the north end to the south end. And I love it when they do that. So I want to say thank you to whoever made that decision to move all those cars around, because uh, it's nice to be able to see the whole, whole other side of town without a bunch of grain train stuff in the way. So, yeah, that's it. Uh, that's all I have. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Willis. Commissioner Lyon. I have nothing to add to the conversation. Thank you. Commissioner Schwartz. Um, with the exception of uh, getting involved with the uh, Parks Master Plan, I have nothing else. Thank you. Are you? Mr. Newt, I will say, what does it take for a commissioner to get a ride in a truck? You can <laughs> rave about public works for six years and still not be offered a ride in a truck. <laughs> I mean, I want to just say it right, I guess. I'll hook you up with guess. Dustin. <laughs> I guess. Um, Dustin gets a new truck. The next one coming, I think. Yeah. The guy that I know. He does come You know a talk. guy. You know I know a guy. guy. Yeah. <laughs> you know a guy. I mean, I thought I knew a guy, but I guess I was wrong. I don't know a guy. Um, I also would say I uh, appreciate that we're going to hear about the crossing. Again, I hope it actually does not take several months before it comes mm -hmm. to us. Um, that's sort of been the status quo as long as I've been a commissioner and we've gotten effectively nowhere. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. And it's frustrating and we yeah. need to do better. And so I hope that we can keep the conversation moving forward about what solutions look like for folks um, crossing the tracks. And all the people that ask Commissioner Schwartz and I questions, you heard that Mr. Gager is going to be out of town for a while, so it's going to take a while for me to get answers to all your questions, mm -hmm. um, yeah. since he won't be here, and that's okay because he's still working, doing other things. But it's just going to take a minute. I yield. Thank you. Uh, thank you all for a uh, lovely meeting this evening, um, and all the and the public comment it was very appreciative. Um, Yes, please get involved in the Parks Master Plan and in the Reservoir Park Geo Design Project. Energy Action Plan is coming. If you have not signed up for the Livingston newsletter, I would highly encourage you to do so. Tons of really great information in there. So if you're able, I would encourage that. Um, and that's all I have this evening. So I have a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. I have a motion by Lyons and a second by Schwartz. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, this meeting of the Livingston City Commission is adjourned at 7.14. Mm -hmm.